Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on with my tutorials discussing complex analysis. This is video number two and I'm going to derive Green's theorem. Green's theorem is one of the fundamental theorems in complex analysis. And just to give you a small bit of motivation as to where it's used, if you're discussing electromagnetism, you require a lot of vector calculus, and a lot of the results of the vector calculus come from Green's theorem. So really, if you can't understand Green's theorem or haven't uh, a strong knowledge of Green's theorem, you can't really and truly get stuck into vector calculus, which means you can't really and truly get stuck into electromagnetism. So that's just a basic, uh, hopefully a basic piece of motivation for this. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all of my videos archived and listed, and I have also a few other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. Before you begin, I need to bring to your attention some previous videos. I discussed, I had four videos discussing complex numbers, or where I did each of the bits and pieces in depth. Thereafter, I had a single video where I discussed complex numbers in 10 minutes. And then I did the first video in the series on complex analysis, where I derived the cauchy riemann conditions, or the cauchy riemann equations. So let's see if we can derive Green's theorem. I think it's useful to tell you in advance what it is, or give you the bottom line up front. The bottom line up front is that Green's theorem shows that a closed surface integral is equivalent to a double integral along a surface. Closed line integral is equivalent to a, a double surface integral. Now, of course, there are some caveats here and there's a bit of qualification to be done, but basically you go from a closed line integral to an open surface integral. Let's consider an arbitrary two-dimensional curve, and I'm going to call this particular curve C. And this is going to be closed, and it's going to be inside an arbitrary vector field. I'm going to just call the vector field P, and it's going to be a function of both X and Y. Uh, well, it could be a function of both x and y, but at the moment what we're going to do is just consider the x component, or the i-hat component, of the vector field P. So we have a two-dimensional curve C inside uh, an arbitrary vector field which only has an i-hat component. And I've sketched this here on the plane at the bottom left of your screen. So we have our x-axis, and we have our y-axis. And then we have the curve itself. The curve itself is this particular shape here. Notice it's going anti-clockwise. And I've split it into two points, as we'll see in a moment. So the, the joining points are here now in red. And we have two curves which join, namely y1 of x on the bottom and y2 of x on the top. Once again, it's an anti-clockwise curve, where we say c, the curve, is a function of z, which is a function of both x and y. So like I said, we consider breaking the curve C, or the closed curve C, into two different paths, y1 of x and y2 of x, whose sum is going to be equal to C. We look at the vector field P. P can be a function of both x and y, and although we'll consider it being a function of y in a moment, let's just consider it having an i-hat, or x component. So the j-hat component goes to zero, we're left with P sub x, in the i-hat direction, and I'm just going to call it L. So L can be both a function of x and y, but it points only in the i-hat direction. Later on we'll discuss where we have M, which is both a function of x and y, but points only in the j-hat direction. It is still useful to note, and it's important to note, that although L is in the i-hat direction, it still is a function of both x and y. So it's not just L sub x, it has a component in the y direction also. However, their sum, or the sum, the whole function put together, only points in the i-hat direction. Now, we're going to consider the closed line integral around the curve C, but inside the vector field P, which only has an i-hat direction. Now, of course, the 
the line is going to be dr, the infinitesimal line element is dr. So del xi hat plus, or dxi hat plus dyj hat plus dz k hat.